which will host a round of the Formula One World Championship next year on a new temporary circuit on the downtown waterfront. And that's where the drivers in today's race hope to be. The field almost set for the start of our 45 lap feature race. Kaz Nakajima, left column of cars on your screen, leads them away from pole. Starting on slicks, Timo Glock alongside him on wet tires. Nakajima gets a good start. A lot of jump. Oh, oh contact there between Lucas de Grassi and Nicolas Lapierre. Lapierre dropping back bid time. He qualified well. Look at Nakajima streaks into the lead. And Valery Petrov gets by Vitali Petrov gets around uh, Philippi there for second spot. So good lord, what a start for Petrov. Adam Carroll off at the back. You saw a terrible start for Timo Glock as well, and I guess we can put that down to the fact that they are on different tires. Slicks for Nakajima, and the wet weather treaded rubber for Glock, the championship leader. Oh boy, Petrov made a dynamite start there. Obviously, Degrassi and Lapierre took each other out sort of thing right in front of him, but nevertheless, going from eighth to second in, in the first couple of hundred yards is pretty stout. And Vitaly Petrov got a great start as well. From eighth, he's up to second. Well, the track is wet, you can see that it's damp, but I don't know whether or not it actually justifies four wets on the car. Yeah, it's obviously not quite damp enough, is it, Steve? I mean, you can see it, and it's obviously drying out. Yeah. There's a dry line there. Uh, well, we got more cars off. That was Roldan Rodriguez. He managed to make it through the gravel trap onto the escape road. Meanwhile, Timo Glock trying to recover. There's Adam Carroll just floundering around. Yeah, but he's quite a long way down now. Mm -hmm. There goes Glock. Now there's Rodriguez, who's at the front of the queue, so he's obviously missed some corners. How's he going to get himself out of that? Well, I don't know how they're scoring him, but uh, there's uh, Timo Glock on the wet tires going through there. As you can see, it, it, it is quite damp, but it's certainly drying out. Yeah, there are a couple of damp patches where water's running across the track with a little bit of elevation change around here. There's not much, but there's enough just to put damp patches around the track there. Standing water, just about to come up to one right there. Rodriguez trying the heist of the century. You saw him shown as the race leader, which he is not having cut the course. Nakajima is the leader over Petrov. And there you see Lucas de Grassi in ninth and Nicolas Lapierre in 12th. And they started in fourth and seventh. So there, that uh, touch on the front was uh, very bad for them. And here comes Marcos Martinez leading the gap, who's gotten by Luca Filippi and Timo Glock. He started back in 19th spot. But he's on the slicks, he's on those dry weather tires. And again, Dave, you know, the, the track to me, it just doesn't look wet enough to get any advantage out of running wet tires. Look at, but look at the TV camera lens. Whoa. We've got rain on the camera lens. It's starting to rain again. Degrassi is off. Second in the championship. Oh boy, this is not the race that Degrassi wanted to have on this last round. Only two points. This is Nakajima. Of Vitali Petrov trying to, no, nope, he has a go around the outside. Boy, you saw quite a bit of spray coming off Nakajima's car there yeah. as he put the brakes on, but Petrov still having a go at him. Kohai Harate and Giorgio Pantano behind in third and fourth. Now, are these guys about to pay a penalty? I mean, it was the right thing to do to start on slicks, but now here comes a scattering of rain again. And the pendulum could swing the other way in favor of those on treaded tires. Yeah, well, of if course. it does start to rain, you're right, Bob. Then it will swing the other way, and I'm sure that's what those other teams, the other drivers, are, were banking on. Here's another look at the start. See if we could pick up Valery Petrov coming forward from eighth. Oh, oh that was a big belt there. As Lucas Degrassi cut right across the grid, hit Nicolas Lapierre. Lapierre dropping back there. Here's Petrov. Puffs of tire smoke as he outbreaks everyone for second behind Nakajima into turn one. That was a terrific start. He weaved through the field. Here's Lucas Degrassi, currently second in the championship. Okay, he's got slicks on as he comes back out, the first of the front runners to stop. But remember... Well, let's hope he gets right if it starts yes, raining. <laughs> exactly. You notice they're true slicks as well, unlike the Formula One rubber, the dry weather tires with the grooves in. These are true racing slicks. There's Degrassi going off. Getting into the gravel, doesn't seem to be picking up too much gravel. He comes back on right in front there, and here we see it from on board his car. Gets wide, of course those wet tires, when they get uh, too hot, there's just absolutely no grip at all. Of course they've obviously 
got a very deep tread, so they don't have anything like the contact patch on the on the rope. Woo! Here's Pantano down the inside of Harate, who puts up a brief fight, but the Italian takes the spot. Well, Giorgio uh, Pantano, of course, very, very experienced at this level of racing. Is it me or does this race seem to be happening in slow motion <laughs> as these guys tippy-toe <laughs> around in these incredibly iffy conditions? No, I think you're exactly right, Bob. That's just what they're doing. They're being very careful because although they're on slicks, and we say they are true racing slicks, the track is still damp. You can see that. The dry in line is appearing round and, and getting more pronounced, but nevertheless, it's a slick track. Look at the gap. Back to the followers. Marcos Martinez in fifth place and all by himself. Here comes Bruno Senna. And then Ho Tongue of China in the BCN car. Well, he's having a good run, too. He, he qualified 21st. On board with Timo Glock. And look at the rain on that onboard camera lens. Well, he's still sticking to his guns. It's getting very gloomy overhead. Tiptoeing through that corner. Like you said, Bob, it is in slow motion if you're on board here. Boy, I can tell from that engine note he's being very careful. Completing lap three. Nakajima with Petrov behind. Pantano now third. Harate fourth. But you can tell from the light level wow, that it's look getting that. Just darker. a huge gap. And this is Marcus Martinez coming through in fifth, but he's 13 seconds behind after just three laps. But still in all, he, oh. he's done pretty well coming up. Christian Bakkerud of Denmark off in the Dave Price racing car. That's a pretty dangerous position, yeah. too, just on the outside of that corner. Let's have another look. Oh, that's someone else now. That's Karen Chandok going off at the same corner in the Durango car. We'll take a break and return to a chaotic situation in Valencia. Back in Valencia at the Tormo circuit, final weekend of the GP2 championship season here on speed. Bob Varsha, Steve Matchett, David Hobbs with you. And don't be confused, those are lappers up ahead after just five laps. Adam Carroll in the red and white car and Mikhail Alation in front of the race leaders. And right now, oh, Petrov trying to get it around. Yeah. Nakajima there on the inside, can't pull it off. Alation gets off the road out of the way. Had enough of that. Adam Carroll still leading, but of course he's a lap down. Right behind him, Nakajima here. Come Petrov down the inside. Still damp in spots. You've got to be yep. very careful overtaking. Is he going to make this stick? Yes. Yep. Gets He's by Nakajima. And now here comes Giorgio Pantano behind the pole sitter, Nakajima. And yeah. he will tiptoe his way through. Yep. Well, then Adam Carroll giving up there, letting these guys get through and get on with the race. He, he went off it right early on in that first lap, so he's way out of the running. The rain continues to yeah. hang in the air, but no rush to the pit lane yet. Remember, everybody has to make a mandatory pit stop in this race. Luca Degrassi has already made his. Oh, oh. And there's Degrassi off. He went for slicks, and he pays the price, and that will all but sew up the championship for Timo Glock. Oh, wow, what a disaster for Lucas Degrassi. Oh, he's done. Qualified poorly, ran into Nicolas Lapierre at the start. And this is his, this will be his first retirement out of a feature race this year. Ooh, wow. Wow. A wow. complete spin. Well, you can see the rain on this lens here, yeah. and, and those tires look pretty wet to me. Ooh. And look how God. deep the gravel is. Yeah, as I'll, soon I'll as he gets on the gravel. This is quite a bit of rain falling. Yeah. Well, of course, the thing about those guys who started on slicks is those slicks are now up to pretty good temperature. He just put those cold slicks on. Uh, by that time, it started to rain again, get a bit greasy, no heat in those tires, uh, yeah. and that's the result. I guess, but I mean, even with heat in, these, in, in a true slick, Dave, as soon as you get water on the track, I and mean, they're so slippy around, you know, around here. Well, they are around anywhere, there's no doubt yeah. about it, but if you've got a, a little bit of heat, it certainly helps a bit still. That's Paul Lucas de Grassi out, out, out oh, of the another spin. That's Kohai Harate. Ooh. Oh, uh, will he be able to keep it going? Oh, if no. Very, very gentle, but yep. I think it's gone out. I think it's stalled. Oh. Yep. Now it has, yeah. Think about those gravel traps is you've got to keep going. If you can keep momentum, you can sometimes get through it. But 
It's a tough break for the Trident team. They have a race win in perhaps the biggest race of the season in Monaco earlier this year at the hands of Pastor Maldonado, but only one point in their last seven races. And Marcos Martinez is now up to fourth from 19th thanks to his tire selection. There's Carol and Alation. They were out front when we came back from commercial. But they are now a lap down. Bruno Senna pits. Now you see slicks coming off and wet weather tires going on. So we talk about the pendulum swinging from dry weather tires, slicks to wets, and vice versa. Senna trying the Senna trying the wet tires. Ooh, there's Harate going up. He got a bit close to that car in front, which I think may have uh, lost a bit of downforce behind Nakajima there. And a combination of that and being on those cold, slick tires sent him off the road. And yet, around this part of the track, I mean, there's, there's no sign of the rain falling at all. No. And yet, it's not a big track. What is it, two and a half miles, something thereabouts, mm -hmm. 2.489. It's a popular test track for Formula One, a big motorcycle race held here every year. And of course, the Spanish are crazy about the motorbikes. Well, there you could see some rain falling, Bob, just as that yep. camera pulled back. There you can see the rain falling. I think it's one of those bizarre circumstances where it's raining on part of the track, but not on others. I mean, look at the yeah. bright sunshine and the <laughs> no. tire shadow here. That's what I'm thinking. If it was Spa or somewhere like that, you know, a long track, where I'd have been in the hills, I could understand it. Squirm there from the car of Giorgio Pantano as he goes around the red machine of Marcus Nimala of Finland. Boy, what a test of driver skill being on these slick tires in these damp conditions. And of course, they, they're so closely these cars are so competitive because obviously they're, they're a stock car. They're, they're just everything's the same. No one can do much. And it really is all up to the driver. There's no doubt about it. Nakajima putting a lap on Nimala. Borja Garcia up ahead. Oh, Nimala almost goes off. Boy, oh boy, yeah, they're tiptoeing around and they're on wet tires. Oh, Nakajima's hammering along here and he's on the slicks. And we have seen it. Well, we saw Bruno Senna go back onto wet, so. Yep. There's Bruno Senna getting wide off into the gravel. And, and he Br just changed the wet weather time. Yep. Yeah, but he's keeping it going there. Keep it going in that gravel. There's Mike Conway again, uh, having another disastrous day in, uh, in this class of racing GP2. He's just had a miserable year, one way and another. Started from the pit lane, and it just hasn't gotten any better. And by starting for the pit lane, he takes himself out of the running for the bonus point for fast lap. You have to start from your grid position to get that. Back to the live action. If that's the right word. This is, it's almost agonizing to watch these young drivers struggling. That's Pantano lapping the ground, who started fifth on the grid. So, uh, boy, oh boy, slipping way down. A lap down this early on in the race pretty grisly imagine being a spectator in the grandstands there in the background trying to figure out what's going on and the race has been I turned upside well down oh Senna getting wide again right. oh, well I tell boy. you what Bruno yeah. Senna's year started off I mean he was looking very very strong but Boy, these last few races, he just looked terrible. Nakajima as well, who started from pole here. He had that long run of podiums early in the season and hasn't scored much of late. As for young Mr. Senna, apparently hasn't inherited his late uncle Ayrton's wet weather racing skills. On board with Luca Filippi. Eighth in points, hoping to move up on this last weekend of the season, but he is now more than a lap down, just 10 laps in. We'll be back. Welcome back to Drizzly Valencia, side of the final weekend of the GP2 championship here on speed. Vitaly Petrov is the leader. Giorgio Pantano right there with the bright yellow helmet cruising along. And they qualified eighth and ninth. Here's Timo Glock, the points leader in the pits. He's on the treaded tires after 12 laps. He, he didn't lose all that much ground. He's seventh as he pits. Well, it'll be interesting to see if he puts slicks on there. Because <laughs> the weather is still... Oh, yeah. Yeah, here we, yeah, here we it go. Look, it looks still pretty. It looks gray overhead, but um, still running very well on those wet tires. They wow. take some duct off the... I think they took a little bit of uh, yeah, duct tape right. off the front brake ducts. Yeah, they do, yeah. 
He is the master of the bonus points. He's picked up about three times as many as anyone else this year. And that, in large part, is what helped Timo Glock to this championship if he can win it. Now, I tell you what, this is when you've got to be very, very careful when you go out on slicks on a damp-ish <laughs> track because they are cold. These guys don't have tire warmers. And I tell you what, they feel like uh, they're square. Now Bruno Senna has made his pit stop for oh. slicks, and they don't oh, they yeah. very well. Well, that's just what you're talking about there, David. Yeah. He obviously had no joy at all. Well, we saw that no joy at all on the full wets. Back into the pits, back onto slicks, and as you say, cold slicks. And, you know, on a drying track, you still need to get them warm. You're right. If the track's wet, you're doomed. You're pretty much doomed on slicks anyway. But, I mean, if it's drying conditions and you may be able to use them, you've got to get some heat into them. This is local hero. Javier Villa about to be lapped by Giorgio Pantano. But look at those clouds. Oh, look at those Villa. clouds. Yeah. Boy, oh, oh, boy. boy. And look at that bright patch of sunshine. Yeah. <laughs> sunshine on these guys. And you're looking up there and you're thinking they're looking at uh, cloud. You'd be thinking, ooh. Yeah. Well, it is right down on the coast, Valencia, right in the south of, uh, south of Spain, right on the coast there. And you do get that changeable weather down there around the coast but uh, again i am surprised that on such a you know compact track that it was raining on one side of the track and not on the other but it's really catching all of these guys out so the order is petrov by two and a half seconds over pantano luca Filippi, nakajima borgia garcia and garcia is lapped and at this point everybody pretty much with a little piece of racetrack to call their own Alation and andy suchek with the Dave Price Racing team, now seventh and eighth. Come on, Timo Glock, now he's got a bit of temperature in his tires going. Going past Javier Villa, just come out of the pits. It's a fairly complex track, this, as you can see, it, not much elevation change, uh, but it's got some interesting corners. Consider it he's a little now bit intent. too narrow for Formula One cars, or yeah. so they say. He yeah. used to use the track for, for testing, particularly for Monaco, where you want a tight winding track. There's not many test tracks around that will give that same idea. Of course, no testing in, in Monaco, of course, in Formula One. That's why the, the Formula One guys use this track, because it's, because it's compact design. But it's actually really, it's a bike track. It's not a car track. Well, you could see how damp it is in parts of the track there. It's just that thin line of dry. Which, of course, makes overtaking difficult, which is what Bruno Senna made the mistake of trying to go down the inside there, where his tires are still cold. Here's making his compulsory pit stop but he's obviously stayed on slicks started on slicks stayed on slicks road starting to really dry out now online okay nakajima coming out of the pits now here comes timo glock this is going to be close but timo is a lap down nakajima yeah. back on his way gently what do we have here in replay? Oh, Andy Suchek in the other Dave Bright racing car. Christian Bakarud has already taken his off, and this will make it a break. Oh, he's going to get back on. Yeah. Oh, good for him. Yeah. He was pushing to stay ahead of Glock, who just come into a picture behind him. This is Glock chasing Nakajima, but not for position. Glock is still a lap down, running in 10th place. Now we're on board with Glock. Look at that rubber building up on the inside of that left front tire, Steve. Yeah, it is. Well, that's some indication that he's getting heat into the tires. Yeah. And they are being able to use them. Giorgio Pantano pits from second place. Slick rears off. Slick rears going back on. Only the rears change. I don't think they're doing anything to the front. That, that pitot tube directly in front of the driver's compartment. We haven't seen that on the other cars. What that's all about. Here Obviously. comes Nakajima and Glock. Coming down the pit straight. Pantana gets out ahead of Nakajima, so he retains the lead. Or even second to his teammate, Vitaly Petrov. I'm glad you're keeping so track of, course, of this, David, because I'm having a terrible time. It's got to stop yet. So Three. Pantano keeps his position in the pit stop sequence. Oh boy. And that's Hopin Tung ahead of them in the red car yeah, on the right. road. It's and we've got a bit of a parade here. Yeah, well, it, this is when it gets hairy when you're trying to lap somebody who's got a bit of pace. Glock 
gets by Ho Pintung, and that is for position. A lap down to the leaders. I wonder if Tung even knew that Glock was probably coming. Probably hadn't got a clue that he was in that group. Yep, he just thought he's letting the leaders by, but he's also letting a rival pass who's on the same lap. It would have been a bit of a vague effort on the part of Hope in Tung to try and hold Glock off, but nevertheless. Now, Glock really doesn't need to be challenging. Well, he, he, he does want to gain as many points as he can, obviously, but by now he knows that Lucas de Grassi is out of the race. Checking the math, he'll need to get up to fourth if he's going to clinch right now, even though he'll gain a few points on Degrassi, even if he doesn't clinch with the finale coming up tomorrow. So it's Petrov leading by 40 seconds according to timing and scoring, but he hasn't yet made his stop. Pantano is second, Nakajima third, Marcos, Martin Marcos Martinez is fourth, and the last man on the lead lap. Then Luca Filippi, Borja Garcia, Michaela Lation and Andy Suchek, and Glock now ninth. I must say, Vitaly Petrov has surprised me a little bit. I mean, he's had a, a relatively reasonable season, but just nothing on, on the style of this at all. Not, nothing at this class at all. I and mean, he just made that unbelievable start from eighth on the grid and absolutely shot by everybody coming to second snagged the lead and uh, never looked back since and the conditions are tricky yeah well russia is one of those countries that formula one would like to get into so i'm sure bernie ecclestone and the and the uh, team principals in formula one would like nothing better than a young russian driver to step forward and be a force on the world scene to justify a grand prix in russia in the future with Glock Nakajima ahead of him and this is not for position Timo Glock very much a man in the picture in Formula One perhaps with the team for whom he's been testing this year BMW Sauber but we're hearing whisperings of Toyota perhaps replacing Ralph Schumacher was already announced he will not be back with that team in Formula One next year. Well he's hounding Nakajima now obviously trying to come to grips with all those guys in front of him. He should be able to dispose of people like Alation pretty easy I imagine but um, notice the rainbow in the background. Yeah, I'll tell you they could be making another tire stop here soon. Proof positive that it is raining at least over there. Sergio Hernandez pits is in for Pastor Maldonado whom I mentioned yeah. earlier won the Monaco round this year. There's the race leader Petrov making his mandatory stop. So where's his teammate Giorgio Pantano must be bearing down on him. Well, I don't know almost a 40 second lead when he pitted. I think he should be able to get out in pretty good shape. Here he comes. Well he was nearly 39. He was nearly 40 seconds right. in front. Exactly. Yeah. A long way in front. Pit stop went very well. Out he comes. Well ahead of his teammates, so he's made his mandatory stop. And now Petrov is in position to become the first Russian driver to win a GP2 race. He has never finished in the top four in the past, but these conditions have been made for him. He made some savvy calls on tires, got away well, and he has simply left the field in his dust. Welcome back to the final weekend of the GP2 championship here on speed from Valencia, Spain. We're watching Luca Filippi being chased by Borja Garcia. That's a battle for fifth. This race started on a drying track. We had a spattering of rain. The drivers who started on slick tires have had the advantage. We thought it might rain harder, which might swing the pendulum back the other way. But at this point, everybody who makes his mandatory pit stop appears to be going for slicks. Well, Luca Filippi on board now, who are on board with started third, and Garcia started 17th. So uh, now here they are together. But they're still a lap down on the leader. Whoa, There's Garcia goes Garcia. down the inside. Up to fifth. Garcia making a real good run. Started 17th, made that look pretty easy. Now, so Garcia's up to fifth. 
And that distinctive engine note, these four liter V8 engines with an eight into one exhaust system. Still looks pretty damp there. Oh, Ooh. somebody well off. Zandy Negrau, perhaps the most experienced driver in the series. The only man who's been in every round of the championship since the series began back in 2005. And he is off now. This is Garcia and Philippi once again. Philippi being passed. Yeah, and both drivers doing a good job there. Philippi not making any silly moves down to try and shut the door the way after it's been shut. And uh, so Garcia pulls past it. Yeah, Negrau. Yeah, Negrau. Seems a bit of a strange accident. Whoa, I was just going to say you need to be so smooth and yeah. gentle on the throttle to get out of the gravel. And then, <laughs> and then he turns the car like that. But nevertheless, he manages to get back out, which is good work. Kaz Nakajima started from pole, but he's dropping back now behind the Capos teammates, Petrov and Pantano. Boy, that, that would be really good for the Campos team, wouldn't it? I mean, just... Assuming they finish like this now, there's some way to go yet, but... Steve, when a team visits a new racetrack, do you typically look at the gravel traps to see what the possibilities of escape might be? Absolutely, it should do. Certainly, you know, in Formula One, all the teams will walk the track as soon as they get to the track with the driver. The engineers and drivers will walk the track, looking for visual cues for the apexes of the corner, looking at the curves, particularly see how high they are, see how much curb you can steal without damaging the underside of the car and you're right and looking at the gravel traps and seeing the best way of getting out should you be unfortunate enough to get in this but is hope in tongue here from china being harassed by andy zuber in the second i sport car this is for 12. zuber is glock's teammate of course they've had a couple of memorable run-ins this year on board luca Filippi. that's andy suchek in the dpr car trying him on the straightaway gets down the inside no not this time Quite a bit of uh, rolled up rubber there yeah. lying around. Just off the racing line, there is a lot of rubber building up. It's not good tarmac, this track, is it? The asphalt, it looks very dated to me. Yeah, it looks old. And it, and it doesn't drain the water well. Even now, when we have some of these high shots, you can see the water around the track still standing. flatulent engine note yeah, there Luke to Philippi's Philippi car. might be having a problem here because he qualified third and he should uh, he, you'd expect to be quicker than this you wouldn't expect to be passed by Andy Suchek well exactly <laughs> Philippi's doing everything he can to block him I wonder if he's lost a cylinder or broken an exhaust header or something if he catches on fire we'll know what it was It's got to be incredibly frustrating for Suchek. Oh, there it goes down the inside. Yes. Yes. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he didn't like that much, but he it was a bit too late. Couldn't do anything about it. You see the blue flag waving. I think if Philippi had held him off much longer, he might have gotten a, a black flag from the flag stand. And here's Vitaly Petrov right behind him to put them a lap down. And there's Pantano. He seems to be holding station behind his teammate. I wonder if there are any team orders in effect here. It's going pretty wide there. There's the order. Petrov and Pantano, Nakajima. Everybody has made their stops. Timo Glock now up to eighth, as you can see. And uh, obviously, if Luca Philip is not going that well, he should be able to wind him in and probably Andy Suchek as well. Still not high enough to clinch, no. says Timo Glock, but still 10 laps to go. This is a real step up for Petrov, as we mentioned earlier. Never in the top four in the past, but somehow this racetrack and these conditions have just suited him. And have, well, we haven't seen him put a wheel wrong yet. And the vast crowd in the background there, they haven't seen put a wheel on either. Good Campos. Seats. They certainly look at oh, Petrov's car, seems to have a smaller section rear wing, and I wonder whether or not they, they gambled on that dry setup on the car. Ooh. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it makes the car very nervous. But there's no question that uh, done a great job handling these tricky conditions, changing conditions, where others have been falling off left, right and centre. We have in replay here 
Javier Villa approaching Mikel Alation, passing easily for ninth. Villa will be looking forward to tomorrow's race. He has always been strong in the sprint race. We'll invert the top eight finishers to set up the first four rows for the sprint finale. Everybody else will start on their finishing position from this race. And Villa, Villa has won three of those sprint races this year, so if he can get up to that eighth spot and start on the pole, that would be absolutely ideal for him. Maybe. No more sign of the rain. It appears that uh, we'll be dry the rest of the way. The sun's shining now pretty nicely, yeah. so, but it's still when you see those long shots, you can still see those clouds lurking over the, up over the hills. Not far away. Yeah, there's only, only nine laps to, to go. Yeah. Hazy to the left. Field well and truly strung out. We Pantano locking up there, pushing to try and keep up with his uh, teammate. Yeah, he's not far behind him. We may see a battle between the Campos teammates for the race win before this is over. And there is Kaz Nakajima looking closely at them, hoping to get a piece of it if they manage to tangle. We'll be back to Valencia in a moment. Five laps to go in Valencia, Spain, the final feature race of the GP2 Championship for 2007. Giorgio Pantano locking him up, trying to keep pole sitter Kaz Nakajima off the back of him. Meanwhile, up ahead of uh, Pantano is his teammate, Vitaly Petrov, who has dominated the race. Absolutely the dominated the race and just hadn't had a race like this at all this whole year. Meanwhile, in replay, this is Timo Glock, the championship leader coming in, going by Luca Filippi and into seventh place. That won't be enough for Glock to clinch the 07 championship, but it will put him on the front row for tomorrow's sprint finale if he can hold the position. This is unusual. Steve's changed the all four tires. They must be ready, having a go for a fast slap. Oh. oh, yes, and that's not the way to go out for fast slap, is it? <laughs> no, not really. Not really. Oh, good. Panic, panic, panic. Where's the, where's the jack? Where's the starter? <laughs> Don't throw the television camera off the top of the building. Well, I do hope they manage to get the car into neutral before they fired it up, or one of those mechanics will be <laughs> off down the pit lane in a flash. Generally considered not to be a good thing. Oh, now Nakajima in the red and white car all over Pantano. The Italian has a big advantage in terms of racing experience, having driven just about everything, just about everywhere including champ car and Indy cars in the United States. Well, four laps to go, and now it really does like a bright, look like a bright and sunny day in Valencia. Mm -hmm. I could sing Valencia here, but I think our director may object strongly to me singing in his ear. And I second the motion. Oh, you second the, the director's motion. It's a lovely song. Do you want a couple of bars? No, I'll pass. Thank you. <laughs> There's licensing issues. We'll have to pay a lot of money. <laughs> hey, there's Bruno Senna, who has finally stopped. Well, I'll tell you what, his season just didn't work out like he thought it was going to at all. It didn't work out like I thought it was going to, to the way it started. I mean, he looked like, uh, yeah, really strong, but boy, oh boy, just had some real weak races I, and very weak qualifying, too. I'm guessing here, but I think that was his mother, the late Ayrton Senna's sister, Vivian, standing there with him. I believe she runs the Ayrton Senna Foundation these days. Good to see her at the racetrack once again. Giorgio Pantano is going to be testing the all-new 2008 GP2 car. These cars have run three seasons. New machinery coming next year, and all of these cars... Oh, oh look at Philippi has taken it off. Someone in the all-new Asian GP2 series is going to get these chassis, and not sure everybody will want that one. It has a handling imbalance. And that's on the front straight. He spun in a straight line. That puts Javier Villa back into eighth place and uh, the pole sprint race tomorrow the the race that he is so successful his specialty. In winning his specialty yeah and usually from pole which means he has a habit of finishing eighth in the feature race which is not quite as sanguine now nakajima who is really desperately trying to get to grips here with giorgio pantano is currently tied for fifth in the points with via and, of course, Adam Carroll, who, we, as, as we've already seen, is not going to score any points today. So this could be a big result for Nakajima. Mm -hmm. He had a run there where he was on the podium for, like, what, six races in a row? It was very, very strong in the middle of the season. 
He also seems to have gone off the boil a bit just towards the uh, the end here. But we coming we back today, good. We tend to forget with the championship runners up front that there are battles for position in the final points all the way down the run. And Nakajima is one of those, as is Giorgio Pantano. Now, Timo Glock has hauled in Andy Suchek. This could be for sixth place. Remember, Glock needs to get to fifth place if he picks up the bonus point for fast lap. Fourth place if he doesn't get the bonus. Here's Luca Filippi again. Let's see how he manages this. Oh! Oh, oh wow. Oh. Hmm. That looked like a bit of a uh, Oh, look at the flat spot on the yeah. right front. Well, the left front, too, but the right front tire. Wow. Now, the, the old... Glock was uh, over a second behind Suchek the lap before this, so he's really going a lot quicker than than Suchek, which you know you would expect really. But boy, if he can get that fifth spot. Okay, yeah. what do you do if you're Timo Glock right now? If Andy Suchek puts up a fight, do you let him go and get ready for tomorrow's finale? As you can see, this is not a great overtaking circuit. No. Given the season that Timo Glock has had, it's been pretty much win or bust. Yeah, I don't think I'd want to risk anything here, but he's won so many bonus points for pole positions and fastest laps through the year that as you said as you said earlier on Oops now Thibaut Glock situation as he takes a look down the inside of Suchek has just changed fast lap Right now is in the hands of Karun Chandok of India remember we saw him pit for four tires It appears they've paid off with one lap to go in Valencia Yeah, I mean, this is one of those things where Timo Glock's really got to keep his head because Lucas Degrassi is near as competitive. The only body that can beat him is going to have to start at the back tomorrow in the sprint race. And really, um, there's no way that Glock needs to take any big risks here at all. And if he stays here, he'll start in the front row anyway tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, better that than uh, try and uh, grab an extra place and um, take yourself out. He knows that too one would hope one would hope indeed he's, he's awfully close yeah that said he is <laughs> he keeps having a look that's the view he has well hopefully better than that but there you go nice clean lens on the onboard meanwhile somewhere up the road Vitaly Petrov there he is having dominated the race from the first corner, oh. comes off the final corner and almost throws it away. Checkers is out for the first time in Vitaly Petrov's career. Oh! oh. What the heck what? happened there? Is Naka that Nakajima ran it. Nakajima ran into the back of Giorgio Pantano as they crossed the line. It took the front wing off the Japanese driver's car. Pantano's waving to the pit wall as though nothing were amiss. Thank you very right, much. <laughs> What's wow. that all about? There is a big difference. L lifted off as he crossed the line, and oh, yeah. maybe that's why Giorgio Pantano is still in GP2 after all those years in Formula One and America's top open wheel series. We'll be back. Back in Valencia, Vitaly Petrov celebrates becoming the first Russian to win an international motor race at the GP2 level. In fact, no American has yet won one, despite Scott Speed's history in this series. Final results. Well, there you see the top nine. Javier Villa there in eighth will start on pole for the sprint race. Timo Glock couldn't quite make it. Uh, Marcus Martin has had a terrific race up to there, and Kaz Nakajima came so close behind Giorgio Pantano, he whipped his front wing off doing it. And Mikhail Alishen in the second ART car down there in ninth. There you see the rest of them. Hope in tongue, 11th. Andres Zuba in the second ice sport car there in 12th. Jason Tehenshi, the Turk, the young Turk there. There you see the rest of the runners. And Nicolas Lapierre, who qualified so well in fourth, really taken out on that very first sprint to turn one. And now on to the sprint race on a beautiful sun-splashed afternoon, a perfect way to wind up the 2007 GP2 Championship. Timo Glock, right side of your screen, on the front row alongside sprint race specialist Javier Villa. Glock with a decision to make at the lights. Do I go or do I follow? With that, Glock slides into a race lead that he would not give up. A lot of action behind him there. People dodging all over the place, getting on the grass, but Glock got a good lead as he came around turn one. 
Look at the scramble oh, behind him. Via under pressure now. Via Suchek, Garcia, Martinez all in that bunch. On board with Lucas de Grassi, who is seeing his championship hopes slip away, but giving it a good effort anyway. Already up alongside Negrau, who started in front of him. Oop, oop, big luck at that. That's Hope in tongue there, trying to pass Mike Conway, who for once has not gone off on the first lap, although the first lap is not over yet. <laughs> oh, got cars banging wheels toward the back there. Andreas Zuber around the outside there in the blue car with the red roll hoop. Didn't make it no. stick though. That's a long corner to, to try that racket. On cold tires. Back on board with Degrassi. So the order is Glock via Martinez, who has passed Andy Suchek for third. Garcia, Georgia Pantano, Petrov, Nakajima, and Luca Filippi, who has started 18th and is now up to ninth. Now, this last corner, as it comes out onto the straight, that really gives you the indication of a little bit of elevation change around here. There's not a lot, but there's just enough. Yesterday, when we were seeing that water, that's where it's catching them out. But today, conditions much better. Clear yeah. skies, dry track. Bruno Senna gets by Adam Carroll. Jason Tehinci out of the race for FMS. The F being Giancarlo Fisichella of the Renault Formula One team, a co-owner of that squad. That's the fourth race that Tehinci's done at Valencia in GP2, and he's retired on the first lap, and three of them. So I guess Valencia's not his favorite circuit. Well, two full years in the series, he has never scored a point. If this is his last GP2 race, that's probably not a bad thing. No. I would say we better try again with somebody else. Locke continues to lead over Villa. Luca Filippi pressuring our feature race winner, Vitaly Petrov, for seventh place. Let's have another look at the start. Wow, what a scramble. There's Suchek in the white car, moves the blue car of Garcia right to the grass verge. Absolutely bird. wheels on the grass there. Garcia was lucky not to uh, let it get away from him there. I'm a little surprised Villa created such a jam of cars behind him. That's Paul Jackson on the left. Look his hands on his it. hips. Yeah, exactly. Well, he's seen worse from his boys this year. He sure has. Get to Grassy up the middle in replay. Oh, that's beautiful. Whoa! Don't do that. Yes. No. <laughs> yes. No. Yes. No. No. Yes. <laughs> that's yeah. it. Oh, down to turn one. Oh, that's pretty cool. That was very cool. Yeah. You gotta be a racing driver. Be decisive. Little old hands twitching on the wheel there. Yeah. This is. Oh. Ah. Well, you know, all those horrible things we said about Tahinchi may yeah. have gotten an assist now, there. I don't think he did get an assist. I think he just put a wheel over the edge and that assisted him. That was enough he needed. All right, Benny, you get what you deserve in life. Hope in Tong, the only Chinese driver in the series. Up ahead is Felipe Albuquerque, a young Portuguese, uh, excuse me, Portuguese driver. Easy for you to say. This is for let that's for 11th. He's in for Adrian Zhao, who's racing in the A1 Championship, wintertime series that has begun this weekend. Oh, who's in the trap? Uh, Marcos Martinez. Got to be careful crossing that pit in and getting back on the racing line, which is on the right side of the racetrack. Out of the turn one goes to Grassi, perhaps driving with a little bit of anger here in the final race of the season, knowing the championship is slipping away. Oh, we got to go three wide here. Oh, that was fairly predictable, I guess. Karun Shandok went inside Zandi Negrau and punted him into Martinez. Yes, definitely can't get three around there. This is not Talladega, chaps. <laughs> no, you can probably get them down the straight, but not when you come to it. Well, we already said it. It's in. a relatively narrow track, this anyway, so, yeah. you know, three into one definitely won't go. Here's another look. There it is. It isn't going to work this time either. No. 
And it looks like Negrau gets away with damage to the front end of the car, wing and front wheels. Well, Marcus Martins there was just recovering from that earlier off, and he tried to close down. Those two coves were coming up behind him. If he looked at his mirror, he could have seen him there. And he should have run wide, instead of which he tried to cut down to the apex and, of course, pushed them both off the road. Good line of competitive cars here. Five laps remaining in the sprint race. There you see the order of the top four. Thibaut Glock firmly in control of the race and the championship. We'll be back. Welcome back to the sprint finale. Final race of the GP2 season here on Speed. This is the battle for 14th place. Karen Chandak of India trying to hold off Bruno Senna of Brazil. Whoops. Lock up from Chandak and off he goes. Oh. Well, a truly into the gravel there. That's at the last corner. Keeping his momentum going through the gravel, which is what counts. Here comes Marcus Niemöller. That's what I mean about that, uh, that pit entrance. The racing line's on the driver's right, so if you get into that gravel trap and come back out, you're right in the middle of the action. Well, Marcus Niemöller got around Chant up there. It's Kohei Harate going by Zandi Negrau. I thought we saw him damaged earlier in that collision. But uh, the car seems to be all right now. Well, that may be why Kohai Harari got around him. Maybe it's not. Um, it looked yeah. like that front wing was damaged, but it didn't look too bad now, I must admit. But anyway, whatever happened, uh, it's put him off his breakfast a bit, and Harati got by him. Meanwhile, Timo Glock leads the race in position to clinch the GP2 championship for 2007. Joining Nico Rosberg and Lewis Hamilton in the line of GP2 champions. Pretty good company, I'd have to say, as both Rosberg and Hamilton, of course, are stars in Formula One right now. This is a replay of Chand up on that last corner. Ooh, left front well and truly locked up there and losing all steerage. Straight into the gravel, kept it going, which is uh, obviously the key. Oh, who's off here? That's Vitaly Petrov, Ooh, our feature race winner. winner. I mean, he just drove impeccably yes. yesterday, and here he is. Oh, <laughs> over that concrete uh, burn thing. Oh, that won't do it much good. The needs conditions are too stable for That's him. That's right, he needs a little rain. This, yeah. This is too nice. Uh, he lost a couple of positions there. I'll keep out the points, because there's not so many points given today, and they go down to the top six as opposed to the top uh, ten, eight, ten, eight. Eight. <laughs> Luca Filippi. Has Nakajima battling over the final point in sixth place. Philippi had a miserable day yesterday. I think we had a problem with our transmission or something. Not quite sure what it was, but um, it seems to have come back today in front of uh, Nakajima, who drove a blinder yesterday. Started on the pole, finished third, running to the back of Pantano as they crossed the line, but nevertheless he had a good run to our Nakajima yesterday. As you mentioned earlier, David, Nakajima got off to a great start this year. Had championship hopes, but a mid-season slump put an end to that. On board with our race and championship leader, Timo Glock. He's had a very good year. Won a lot of uh, extra points for fastest laps and pole positions, but he's had a couple of pretty lackluster races, and, and he's had a couple of mistakes. Uh, Magdi Kaur, of course, comes to well, mind when he and his teammates started side by side and ran into each other before they'd right. gone more than about 25 feet. That was surreal. It was surreal. And uh, pretty hair-raising race all round, one way or another, that one. But also, uh, he's made a couple of other slight mistakes. And, of course, he's had a few mechanical problems, quite mm -hmm. a few mechanical problems. They've made a few interesting and inappropriate, I think, strategic decisions throughout the year as well. From time to time, we'll see teams put off their mandatory pit stop in the feature race until it's so late that they can't make it up. Yeah, that has been unusual, hasn't it? You know, they, they, they have to, as you say, they have to come in, they have to change tires. Oh, oh dear. Karen Chandok off again, and this time it looks like he might be done. That's his car on the left. Marcus Niemöller of Finland on the right. They, uh, Niemöller got by him when Chandok went off into the gravel at turn one just a couple of laps before, and now, obviously, he caught up with Niemöller again, and um, I would say he was trying to get round Niemöller. We don't see what happened there, but nevertheless, both out of the race. Oh, here we see it. Let's have a look. That's Niemöller leading the way. Chandok tries yeah. it. Oh! Well, that never had a cat in hell, Oh! 
And Chen Duck perhaps hoping to follow countryman Narain Karthikeyan into Formula One. Not with moves like that. We'll be back. Get a Back in Valencia, Bob Barsha, David Hobbs, and Steve Matchett with you. And that man, Timo Glock, is now just four laps away from his fifth win of the season and the 2007 GP2 championship. Javier, go ahead. Javier in second place there, and he and uh, Glock between them have won seven sprint races this year. Here's Andy Suchek, and right behind him is Borsega, Borja Garcia, and they're struggling for a third. So Garcia, who's not had a podium all season, so this would mean a lot to him. Be a great run for Suchek as well. It would be a great run for Suchek, and of course for Dave Price Racing. Who have also had a pretty miserable, but well, a couple of you know, their none of their years in GP2 have been what you call great. And as you were saying earlier on, Bob, this will be the end of this Dallara chassis in GP2, right? The end of 2007, they will retire that chassis in GP2. They'll have a brand new chassis to play with next year. Be interesting to see if they make the cars perhaps a bit more adjustable. Well, I think the idea was to keep costs down, but you're right. I mean, from a technical standpoint, yeah, I would love to see a lot more technical pieces put onto the car. Uh, but they are very, very restrictive of what they can do. You can change pieces like for like, but under no circumstances can you modify anything. Even if you have the uh, facilities to do it and the money to do it, you absolutely cannot do it to the rules. On board Luca Filippi, that's Kaz Nakajima behind. Looks a lot closer from this camera oh, angle. This is for sixth place. Going through turn one there. Oh, Come oh. down. Oh, oh. Yep. Yeah, he's right behind us. That's a long corner, that you know. You've got to get the old mechanical hand, mechanical grip good there because it's a tricky corner, medium speed but long. That's where Karen Chandock and Marcus Niemela exited the race together. Uh, he seems to have lost out a bit here. Not a lot of full throttle running around this racetrack. No, there's not. Philippe's car sounds better than it did yesterday in the uh, in the feature race. It's good enough to hold Kaz Nakajima at bay. Yeah, the, see how the row, you look out the back there. Wow, Nakajima all over him now. Can you make a real good exit off here? Maybe get him to that far sweeper. Not a good spot to overtake by the look of things to me, but. That won't stop these guys. I was just going to say, in GP2, uh, it doesn't stop them. No, there you see the running order on the screen. Giorgio Pantano in fifth. Two to go. Our feature race winner, Valery Petrov, started eighth, and that's where he runs. Now, this, of course, is the last point at stake here, so uh, Nakajima really wants to get by, although I think he's pretty much uh, assured a fifth place in the championship, but obviously a point's a point. Look at Degrassi back in 13th. Boy, this has not been a good weekend for him. Coming in with a shot at the championship, and he just hasn't been close to it. Terrific battle here, just two laps to go. So if he wants to get around, Kaz Nakajima has got to be uh, working out where he's worked. This is on board now with Lucas Degrassi. Down in 13th spot. It is pretty remarkable that he has been as close to the championship as he has been, considering he has scored zero bonus points for pole or fast lap. Well, Glock, as you mentioned, David, has picked up 11. Exactly. But, of course, and uh, he's actually scored 16 out of 20 races this year, Lucas Degrassi. So he's had a very good scoring season, but it all went unraveled this race here. I mean, started badly down the field, made that lunge across the track, ran into Pantano. I ran into Lapierre, which has really uh, set him back this whole weekend. So really never been in the running this weekend at all. And Glock just did it all right. Another look at Philippi and Nakajima. Still welded together. <laughs> they are welded together. Only got less than a lap to go now. There you see the gap. Well, no gap, really. Well, that's one of the features of these GP2 cars that I do like, the fact that they are able to run close together because of the underbody styling on the cars. That's been a great design feature, I think, on these GP2 chassis, allowing these drivers to do exactly that, fight it out. On board with Glock. 
final few corners en route to a championship. And perhaps a future in Formula One. Well, this is the way to do it. Winning from the front row. Had a good run yesterday. Started on the front row. Finished up in the uh, seventh spot. Off the final corner, the checkered flag awaits the 2007 GP2 champion, Timo Glock of Germany. Javier Villa comes home in second place. Whoa. Ooh, I don't know that I would well, try I, that. I wouldn't do that. Yikes. Yeah, we, especially after what we saw yesterday. And in third place, look at the fist pumping going on from Andy Suchek, who takes Dave Price Racing to a rare but very happy podium position. Well, after all that Timo Glock did to put an exclamation point on his championship, he very nearly undid it all there Boy, with that celebration that almost led to a big crash. We'll be back. Back in Valencia, there is GP2 champion Timo Glock, ready to take the podium. One that he'll remember for a long time. That's Javier Villa, who finishes in second place. At any moment now, we expect there's Andy Suchek to take third. Now time for the anthems. Well, that's the Cliff Notes version of the German national anthem, I, I guess. guess. <laughs> Notice how tall Andy Suchek is. He is very tall. I was thinking that when he, I mean, he's the same height as uh, Timo Glock. Good for him, of course, running, uh, getting on the podium here in Spain as a young Spaniard. And, of course, great for Dave Price Racing. If he goes on to Formula One, it'll be his second visit to that series. And the mechanics being a little rowdy. <laughs> Javier Villa looks like he's about 14. In a series full of young hopefuls. Well, Villa's had five podiums this year. All of them have been from sprint races. Not had a great year in the uh, features. Well, there you see how tall Andy Suchek is. That's right. If we're going to have a basketball team among the GP2 drivers, we know what position Suchek is playing. Center. Champagne time. Well done, gentlemen. Well, that certainly was a great result for... Uh, for Andy Suchek and Dave Price Racing in the, in the final race of the year because Dave Price Racing really has had a pretty miserable year all round. And with that, Timo Glock has his champagne and his trophy and he walks off into what will hopefully be a bright racing future. Final results. Well, Timo Glock for Iceport International, VA again, uh, one of his podiums for sprint races. Suchek, his second podium of the year for DPR. Then Garcia, Pantano, Filippi, Nakajima didn't have quite the run he had yesterday, nor did Vitaly Petrov for Campos, and then Mike Conway finally gets it on ninth, but of course, no points today. There's Albuquerque down there for Arden, hoping tongue for BCN, the China Chinese driver, Zuba, the iSport teammate of Glock, then Degrassi right down there, not having a good run. Now let's hear from our champion, Timo Glock. Timo, congratulations, a fantastic job today. Uh, probably the uh, perfect way to end the year for you, I guess. Yeah, after after all the, the hard work over the year and uh, the bad races, what we have in Spa, it's just, and the hard race yesterday. I mean, yesterday was just something, a special race. And um, today I said, okay, when I can win the start, I will I will try to, to win the race for the team. And after after the start, I had a, quite a good start, a bit of wheel spin still, but uh, it was better than, than the rest. And uh, at the end, I tried, you know, to save a little bit the tires at the beginning, pushed in the middle of the race a bit more. And at the end, I tried to, to bring it over, over the distance. And uh, at the end, you know, I'm just happy. I think uh, at the moment, it's still a bit difficult to, to believe it because when you have so many up and downs, it's just, uh, 
uh, just perfect when you when you at the end in the last race you can win the the championship and it's just a, a great feeling how does it feel to hear the words timo glock gp2 champion very strange at the moment it's still you know it's 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 just a, a finish of a, of a of a of the last race and uh, but at the end when you when you hear the engineers and my team boss over the radio and uh, all the all the mechanics uh, quite just uh, happy and uh, I mean we, we won the team championship as well and that's just a just a perfect feeling and now for now on I hope uh, we can get something done for for 2008 here are the final driver standings for 2007 well you see it was pretty close in the end even after that display by Glock today 88 to 77 for Degrassi Pantano 59, Luca Filippi 59, Na Nakajima there 44, he had a couple of races where he could have done some more, VR 42, Adam Carroll, he had some wasted opportunities, Bruno Senna down there on 34 points, should have done so much better, then you see Pastor Maldonado who won the Monte Carlo round, Nicholas Lapierre who should have done better than that, most, one of the most experienced drivers there, Petrov down there with 21 points, Conway, and you see the rest of the runners, Sebastian Buemi there, a bit of a disappointment. And after two straight years of ART Grand Prix as the team champions, we have a new name atop the heap, Steve. Uh, they are iSport International, 118 points. They're the only team this year to break into three figures behind them, ART Grand Prix, 87, and just seven points behind the nice fellas. Campos Racing take the third spot on the podium for the team championship. Durango with 44, FMS. 37, very close up, just behind them in 10th spot, Trident Racing, right down the bottom with four BCM. And with that, we bring the 2007 GP2 Championship Series to a close here on Speed. I'd like to congratulate 2007 Drivers' Champion Timo Glock and the team champions from iSport International. Before we go, remember to join us tomorrow at 2 a.m. Eastern Time or late tonight for those of you out west for the Formula One Chinese Grand Prix from Shanghai. For David Hobbs, Steve Matchett, and Peter Windsor, I'm Bob Varsha. We hope you've enjoyed the 07 GP2 Championship here on Speed. So long, everyone.